Hey, what's up, guys? It's Lewis at that convention guy collectibles, and I'm back from Rhode Island Comic Con. And I thought I'd go ahead and share some discussion about the con itself. So let's start with the con. Number one, for those of you who haven't been, it's a great, great show. Um, they have something like 50 to 60 guests. Uh, they usually have some pretty big names, um, and this show is no different. To put it in perspective, it takes place in an arena that's connected to the convention center, and it's also part in the hotel. Now, the hotel uh, just hosts uh, panels and things like that. The uh, convention center has a fifth floor that has autographs, and the third floor has vendors and celebrities doing autographs. The uh, arena has like all the headliners. And uh, when there's too many people in their line, sort of like this year, Charlie Hunnam and Katie Seagal um, were there and their extra people get put in the bleachers in seats, which is actually a nice thing because instead of standing in line for who knows how long, they basically put you up there, you're in a nice, comfortable, padded seat, and then at a certain point when the line kind of makes sense, then they bring, you know, five people down or ten people down, whatever the number might be, and then you get in the back of the line. Um, so that's, that's not a bad thing. Um, however, the lines do get very, very long. Now, a lot of this is like, um, I don't know, every city's different, every event is different. I will, I will put it this way. I went to Salt Lake, uh, or Fanex Salt Lake, just a few weeks ago, maybe a month or so. And Charlie Hunnam, who played Jax Teller from Sons of Anarchy, was there. And I was in line probably number 15. I mean, and I had just walked up, you know. Um, I don't think the line ever went past like 20 people. Now it kind of stayed... You know, like when I got to the front of the line, it looked like there was 15 people behind me. Um, there was no number system or anything like that. We just kind of walked up. But, I mean, 15, 20 people in line. And he was part of the uh, neon mango that he's working on. So he was spending, you know, two or three, four, five minutes with each person, you know. This time, Rhode Island, there were hundreds, hundreds of people in his line. So... You know, just kind of goes to show, like, every show is different, every city's different, the fandom is different, maybe who else is at the show determines how busy a person's line will be, um, so it's really hard to say, but all in all, they did a great job. Now, I will say, this is like my sixth year in a row going to this event, I love it, and I've mentioned before, I love the con, but I also love the city. I love the food there. I usually hit up this Italian deli. Um, there's two of them right across the street. Like them both. I'll go get food there. Um, have lunches there. There's a whole area with like tons of restaurants. I always go there for dinners. So it's always really nice to go because the food is really good. Um, and the convention is always really nice. Um, is it spread out? Yeah. Is there a lot of people there? Yes. Um, but there's a lot of guests, so it kind of splits people.
Now, I will say this. A few months ago, I went to Atlanta Comic Con and I complained. Or was it Atlanta Comic Con? No, it wasn't Atlanta Comic Con. It was called something. Oh, Dragon Con. And I complained because they had all the celebrities in one building. And then, like, down the street somewhere else were all the vendors. And then down the street somewhere else was something else. And I said, you know, it's kind of, I've never seen a convention that was split up that way. And I complained about it. And I don't know, ever since then, I've been kind of thinking, like, maybe it's not a bad idea. And the reason is this. I'm trying to get to celebrity area. And I'm having to, like, wade through all these, like, hundreds and hundreds of people doing cosplay or shopping or whatever it might be. They're just not there for the celebrity stuff. Um... So that's one thing that Dragon Con does, you know, that I complained about, but it might actually be a good thing because if you're going for the celebrities, you're there for the celebrities. Um, you know, and I get it. There's people that want to take pictures of the celebrities, but they can't afford to get up to the table uh, to get autographs or take selfies, things like that. You know, so in walking by, you'll see them and try to get a picture from pretty far away. I get that. Um, but as a person who's trying to get autographs, it is really difficult trying to navigate all these different areas, especially Rhode Island Comic Con, like I said, has some in an arena, then you have to walk a ways and go to uh, the convention center, go up a few floors for more. So it's spread out. So it's a lot of walking, trying to like bypass everybody who's just kind of staying around, taking pictures and doing cosplay. And shopping and everything else so anyway I don't know. I don't know if I'm loving it or hating it. If Dragon Con has it right or they have it wrong, I'm not sure. But um, I know I have seen some different things. Now, let me get to the main issue with this convention. And that was photo ops. Celebrity photo ops, you know, professional photos. You walk into a booth, you stand on an X, you're with the celebrity, they say, ready! And they snap a picture and then you keep on walking. Um, the pictures are usually costly, um, anywhere from, you know, 60 to 150, 200 bucks. Uh, most people range in that 80 to 100 dollars. If you're getting multiple people in a picture, um, multiple celebrities, I mean, then you're going to pay multiple prices. Um, you know, so I got the Smallville sons and fathers, and it was like two. 50, 275, something like that. I don't even know. Um, so here was the problem. This year, they moved the celebrity photo op area. Now, if you go back a few months ago, I complained about Steel City Comic Con. Great show, but they have their celebrity photo op waiting area outside. It was summertime, and I'm getting beaten down by a hot sun and waiting to take a photo with somebody and i was out there for probably 35 40 minutes so red head burned um not fun and they're about to have another show in december and i thought what are they gonna do put people outside in december in pittsburgh for anybody who's been to pittsburgh or seen a football game pittsburgh in december it's usually got some some good amount of snow so I'm not really sure, like, what, you go stand outside in the snow, like, freezing your butt off while you're waiting to take a picture? So, anyway, that's why I'm not going to that convention anymore, but that's for another, you know, video. Um, this one, they moved. It used to be on the main floor of the convention center, and what they did was they moved it upstairs to the fifth, to the fifth floor, where they normally had celebrities. So, what they did is they pretty much split the room in half. Half are celebrities, um, and then half is the photo op area. 
did not work. Reason being, I think they underestimated how many people were getting professional photos. It was way too many. It was way too crowded. It was, it was just a cluster of a time. It was terrible. Um, on Saturday, of course, the busiest day, I had a photo op, uh, the Sons of Anarchy trio. That would be Jax, Gemma, and Clay. And I was really excited for that. And it was at four, scheduled at 420. Well, I was standing in uh, another celebrity's line at 3 o'clock. And they had a photo op at 310. So I figured, hey, by like 315, 320, 330 at the latest, they'll be back. That'll give me like 40 minutes in line. Then I'll go hit my photo op. Well, at about 345, 4 o'clock, we get message that the photo ops are, are 30 minutes behind. So I had been standing in that line for about 45 minutes at that point and just found out that they ha that person hadn't even started their photo ops yet. So there was no way that I was going to make getting their autograph and still make it to my photo op. Now, my brain was thinking, well, if it's 30 minutes behind for them, it's got to be 30 minutes behind for the Sons of Anarchy people too. But because there's like six different tents, you don't know why they were behind. So I decide, hey, at 4.20, I got to go. Or like 4.10, because I want to make sure I didn't miss it. I got to go up there just in case they are running on time for that particular photo op. So I head off after waiting 45 minutes in this person's line, wasting time, doing nothing. Um, and I go stand for my photo op. Well, sure enough, they're behind 30 minutes. So the 4.20 start time has now been pushed to 4.30, then it's pushed to 4.40, then it's pu pushed to 4.50. Okay, I get it, 30 minutes. Well, then 5 o'clock rolls around, and I'm still waiting. It hasn't even been called yet. Uh, at 5.10, I believe, they called for us to go stand in the line. Well, 5.20, 5.30 rolls around and we're still standing in line. We haven't even started the photo op yet. Now the show is closing at seven, I believe on Saturday, maybe six. I'd have to double check, either way. Um, but the person that I, that I was standing in the line to get their autograph before was only gonna be there Saturday. So I needed that autograph, and not only did I need that autograph because it was only Saturday, but they were the last person I needed for a particular piece that already had four other signatures on it. They were the fifth. They were going to be the last one. Um, it's a Superman piece that I'll show you in a few minutes. So it was really important to get that autograph and I'm freaking out because at this point I'm thinking I'm not going to be able to get to it because this photo op thing is crazy. So long story short, we finally get into the photo op, finally finish it and it was about 545. So they were about an hour and 20 minutes behind schedule um one guy on a microphone screaming uh you know to try to let people know what photo op where to go that kind of stuff but he was mumbling a lot he was angry he was yelling so you really couldn't hear it a lot not to mention there's probably a few hundred people in that area all talking so nobody's being quiet and you know listening um i was because i didn't wasn't there with anybody so i was just quiet but everybody else is talking super loud nobody can hear anything um, so that was kind of the problem with that. It was, it was a lot. Now, I will say I ran from the fifth floor of the convention center, down the stairs, down the ramp, across to the uh, arena, down those stairs to get to the main floor, and then got in the guy's line, and I was able to get the autograph right as the show was closing. Didn't bother me that it was closing, but, but luckily he did do the autograph, um, and the piece turned out really well. Not quite as good as I had hoped, because I had somebody else sign, and they they took up a much bigger area than I had wanted. They weren't even on my original plan to get signed, but then somebody convinced me that I should, and I was like, oh, okay, and then unfortunately I got number five done before number four, and he kind of took number four's place, so I had to have number four sign in a different place. Anyway, I'll show you in a minute. 
Um, all in all, really good show. Met some really good celebrities, super nice people.